Hey, how's it going? It's Ollie here. In today's episode of Niche Spotlight, we're going to be looking at the canvas tote bag niche. So, should you be selling canvas tote bags on Amazon or should you avoid them? Well, as always, first thing we're going to analyze is the revenue. How much are these making? Well, number one bestseller is making £14,616 every single month selling on Amazon. Well, might not be every single month, but certainly in the last 30 days, that's what it's doing. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sellers making more than 3k a month so there's a lot of demand for canvas tote bags lots of different designs of tote bags sell so we know if we sell canvas tote bags we're going where the money is on amazon which really is the number one thing you want to make sure you're doing as an amazon seller so in terms of high demand we can give that a tick there's more than three 3k sellers what about low competition how many established sellers are there with more than 500 reviews? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight established sellers. So no, there's not five or less. And are there any main brands, name brands that we'll recognize on page one? Let's have a little look. To be honest, I don't recognize any of these as big brands. You know, Nike isn't on there or any other uh, big companies that I recognize. So I don't think there's any main brand. So the competition here, although it is outside of the number of established sellers I look for, I'd say it's manageable. I'd say it's medium level of competition. If you can offer something really special to this niche, you can beat the competition still, but it's gonna be a bit harder than a really low competition niche. Interesting. What about low hassle? Can we make this product ourselves? Well, it's a bit of canvas. Essentially, you just need a couple of bits of material, stitch it together, maybe print a design on it or sew a design into it and it's done, right? It's um, obviously I wouldn't ever do that. I would always get a manufacturer to do it. But the point is, it's easy to construct this product, right? It's relatively easy to put together. Yeah, I think we could make it ourselves. Always a good sign when you're looking for a private label product because it means it's gonna be super easy to manufacture, super quick, and there aren't too many things that can go wrong. Is it in a low hassle category? Home and kitchen, baby, sports and outdoors, pets, stationery and office supplies. Well, let's have a look. Great, I'm gonna click on a listing, go down to the product information, and it's in home and kitchen. So yes, it's in a low hassle category. Is this a seasonal product? Well, it's a tote bag. I don't think people are gonna to wanna to buy these at any particular time of the year. Um, we could have a little look at the data to verify that, but I really don't see why this would peak at any time of the year and not sell at any time of the year. It's a fairly uh, evergreen product. So I'd say it's not seasonal. And what about the dimensions? Well, if we take one of the products, sometimes people sell several of these uh, in a pack, sometimes it's just one. But let's have a look at the dimensions of one of the products and, and see. So 45 by one by 36 is the product dimensions. What we need is the package dimensions. Right, I don't know if we're gonna be able to find that. Package dimensions, 36 by 22 by three, and it's 160 grams. So yes, it's not oversized, it's small, it's very light, and it's extremely durable. I mean, you could throw a load of these into a box, ship them over from China and none of them are gonna break because it's just bits of material. So yes, the dimensions look very solid. What about the gap in the market? Are there any issues with this product? Um, are there any bundles in the niche? Well, let's have a look. Let's grab one of the top selling products in the niche and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it, any problems that we could solve. So I wanna look at the reviews to do this. And we're gonna to go to maybe the three star. It's people who like it a little bit, but there's definitely some problems. This person says the bags shrink. Interesting. Variable quality, so this is a quality issue. Some are thicker and some handles can be twisted. Quality issue. Not the best quality. Right, very creased and need to be ironed. Not uniform, not all the same. Some of the handles looked of a lesser quality. Okay, so if you wanted to beat this seller, you might want to make your bags 
all equal quality and really be careful with the quality control. Maybe get an inspection service to check all the bags are basically the same. Let's have a look at the four star reviews. Okay, but hard to decrease. Interesting. So the material of this bag seems to be very easily creased, which is a bit annoying. Let's have a look. Took a risk because of the mixed reviews. Glad I did. Thick material, bigger than expected and good quality. Some need a bit of an iron before use. Very thin material. Okay, so lots of people are saying these need ironing. They're very creased. The material is very thin. So you could make the, the material thicker and get rid of the problem where they're creased by making sure they don't crease. There's an example of an issue you could potentially solve. So there are issues. What about bundles? Are there any bundles in the niche at the moment? Well, there's packs of 10, which could count as a bundle potentially. However, I usually define a bundle as the main thing plus an additional bonus thing. And a pack of 10, I mean, you could say it's a bundle, but they haven't offered an additional bonus thing with the product. All right, so maybe not. Um, are there any others? I can't see any bundles on page one. So that's certainly a way you could uh, differentiate. If you offered a canvas tote bag plus something else which would complement the tote bag, maybe some food storage bags or something like that that people could use instead of the little plastic bags you get for fruit and vegetables at the supermarket. Random idea, but that could be a useful bundle to offer in the niche. And you might add more value with your product, be able to charge more and actually get more sales. So yeah, there's no bundles in the niche. So now we've had a look at an overview of this product, right? Let's add up the scores and see how I really feel about the niche overall. So what about the demand levels? Well, definitely a decent amount of demand. I mean, it's not the highest demand I've ever seen, but £14,616 per month for the number one bestseller is pretty decent. And there's lots of 3K sellers. So I'm going to give it a relatively high score. I'm going to give it a 17 out of 20. What about low competition? Well, there's eight established sellers, right? If I remember correctly. So it's not really low competition, but there are no brands. So it's good, but it's not perfect. I'm going to give it a 12 out of 20 for competition. What about low hassle? Well, this is about as low hassle as you can get, right? It's literally a piece of cloth. Um, I mean, the only thing that could potentially be an issue is the quality control, as we saw with some of those bags. The handles are a bit coming off, things like that. It's not really a very big hassle. Um, so I'm actually going to give this an 18 out of 20 for low hassle. Gap in the market. Well, there's some issues with the products, definitely. There's no bundles. But I don't know if there's a really massive gap. I mean, a, a tote bag is a tote bag, right? Um, I think you'd have to try quite hard to actually create uh, a product that really stands out in this niche and really gives customers a reason to buy from you rather than somebody else. Uh, because these are all quite samey. Like your bundle would have to be really good. So for that reason, I'm gonna give Gap a 13 out of 20. There are gaps, but it's not like a massive one that makes it seem easy that you can charge more and offer a better product. So what about the hunch for this? Uh, niche. This is the score I give to the kind of undefined feeling I get about the product just from my experience and whether I would actually offer it on my Amazon account or not. Um, just based off products I've launched in the past. I can't always explain this necessarily, but I look at things like the price, whether I think you could realistically make profit with it, whether I think it would sell really well, whether I think the levels of demand and competition are kind of well balanced and whether there's a real opportunity here well let's start by looking at the price and, and work backwards from that so the average kind of price is really anywhere between five to fifteen pounds the average price is maybe ten maybe twelve pounds for the product so if we were going to offer more value than everybody else we'd want to charge fifteen pounds maybe sixteen seventeen eighteen maybe twenty pounds for the product All right now again it's not going to be easy to do that because it's a little bit difficult to know how to add value in this niche. You'd have to do a few test batches, figure out what's really missing, and then offer that. I mean, one thing that I've noticed is missing is colored bags. Like these are all kind of plain uh, canvas color. If you could offer a colored canvas, 
then maybe that will fill a gap in the market. But again, we don't really know if customers want that or not. Maybe they do. It's um, certainly something you could test. So that there are some opportunities, but it will take a lot of testing. Um, and with a relatively low price point, the margins are going to be a bit slim. So we have to be careful with how much value we add. We don't want to eat into our profit margins. Now, with the competition being, I'd say, medium, uh, advertising costs might be a little higher because more people are bidding to get their ad higher up the page. So that's going to add to your costs as well. So for Hunch, I'm going to give this 12 out of 20 because there are some issues, but there is definitely an opportunity. All right. So let's summarize this now. Come up with a score out of 100 for this niche. What are we thinking? So 17 for demand. 12 for, for low competition because it's about medium competition really 18 for hassle 13 for gap and 12 for hunch gives us a score of 72 i think that was the same score as the last product we analyzed that's very interesting um i mean the low hassle element of this and the high demand really do uh make it a good opportunity so go check out this niche you never know uh, it could be one that helps you launch a product that makes you a couple thousand a month in profit. All right. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Now, if you want some help launching your product on Amazon, then book a call with me. There's a link in the description. You can book in a free Amazon accelerator call. And what we'll do is we'll talk about your goals first. Figure out what type of business you want to build uh, selling on Amazon. How much money do you want to earn? What kind of life do you want to live? And what do you want things to look like in six months, in 12 months? Then, once you've got clear on your goals, we'll figure out where you're starting from. So, how much experience you have in business and Amazon. If you're brand new, that's fine. Figure out what's going on in your life right now. And once we know where you're starting from, we'll create a clear step-by-step -step plan for you to get from where you're starting from to hitting your goals. And then once we're clear on our plan, then we can talk about the possibility of getting some help with the plan if you want us to research a product for you, if you want us to do your listing, if you want us to help you import the product from China using our product concierge service, if you want some coaching. These are all things we can talk about. So click the link in the description, book in your free Amazon Accelerator call today. I can't wait to chat to you on the phone. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll catch you very soon.